Hello and welcome to the new moon video. So we first are going to talk about the energies around this new moon and how it affects you. And then we're going to get into the 12 zodiac signs. So there will be timestamps for you to watch how this new moon is impacting you specifically, as well as the energies overall. So let's get into the energies overall with this new moon. Now the new moon will be happening on the 17th, 18th of June, 2023. And so this is depending on your location. And the new moon is going to be in the sign of Gemini. We are in Gemini season. So this is a new moon with the sun and the moon, both in the sign of Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. It's a mutable air sign. It has to do with duality. So two sides to every situation. We have been in Gemini season for a while. And this new moon is coming in with us closing Gemini season because on the 21st, the sun will move into the Cancer. We'll have the solstice. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll be having the summer solstice. And in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll be going through the winter solstice. So this new moon is really allowing us to look at the information that we've been dealing with throughout the month. All the communication, the ideas, the things within our daily routine, and more so with what we have to do, what we have to take care of. Gemini is a, a sign of having to take care of multiple things. So you could have had a lot happening in Gemini season where maybe you thought you needed to do this and then something comes up and you have to change plans. Mutable signs often offer a lot of change. Now, a new moon is about a new beginning, a fresh start. So we are entering into this new beginning and fresh start when it comes to our mind, what we think and what we communicate, information that's coming through to us, especially. With a Gemini energy specifically, we can become very mentally overwhelmed. This is where we learn things. This is where there's a lot of information. The sun and the moon are in Gemini. So that means the sun is showing us what, you know, new ideas, new information about the what we want to move forward with. But it's not almost like, how do I put it? It's not like a physical thing that you have already put together. It's almost these ideas that are forming within your epiphanies, awakenings. You could have completed a project, but you still have to kind of come up with things that need to change around what you've come through with. So that being said, it can be pretty busy around this new moon, but we do have the sun and the moon both squaring Neptune in the sign of Pisces. And this gives us a lot of fog, uncertainty, and lack of clarity to say the least. So there's a lot of information coming through, but we aren't clear about the direction of us truly moving forward. We might even feel during this new moon like we are lacking physical vitality because the sun is our vitality, it's our energy, it's our life force. And with that square to Neptune, Neptune is a plan of illusion, fogginess, needing time away, escapism. So you could even feel like you want to escape. There's just too much coming to light. And I do feel with this new moon, it'll be pretty informative. So there's any secrets, it can definitely come to light during this new moon. Information. Gemini is a sign of information. And it's almost kind of information that you might have thought something was one way and the next thing someone is saying something else to you. I would use my discernment a lot during this new moon. It's not the best new moon to sign any deals. So if you have to sign any contracts on the 17th, 18th, I'd be wary of that or get into a, anything with someone else or even trying to have a conversation that is um, where you are looking for clarity. You won't be able to get that. And that can give you a lot of stress and anxiety if you are seeking clarity under this new moon. Um, this is a new moon too, where others can take advantage of us a lot easier due to the square to Neptune, both emotionally and also with the sun. We are kind of not thinking clearly. We kind of either are in a fog. And have you ever been in a fog, driving through a fog? You are, need to take it slow. You got to slow down. You got to use your fog lights. You got to see it ahead of you, but you got to move very slow. And that's the energy of this new moon. You got to slow down and take it one step at a time. 
it's just with this new moon the fogginess it's very easy for us to be manipulated it's very easy for us to be taken advantage of it's very easy for us to not see things 100 percent there will be a lot of communication a lot of ideas i would say this would be the best new moon to sit down write out your ideas right might not even feel the need to work on it you won't be wanting to work on any projects under this new moon due to that so if there's anything you really need to take care of or get it done this new moon will feel like oh my god i need to get these things done but i just feel so out of it i don't have the vitality to push forward or the mentality to you know so you won't be feeling like you want to take care or get things done this is more just of planting off seeds and not trying to physically do anything or even converse with others others might not be able to really truly understand you so if you're trying to share your dream or idea about the future people might be feeling a bit like hmm <laughs> i don't know about that and that can create a lot of dis disillusionment we can feel depressed especially if you're prone to depression neptune especially in the sign of pisces can make us feel isolated alone we are feeling more sensitive, vulnerable, the, you know, so much to do. How am I going to do this? I'm alone in this. And it can be very informative. On the same day, on the 17th of June, we do have Saturn in Pisces turning retrograde. So that can also create a lot of... Um, Saturn has entered into the sign of Pisces on the 7th of March, 2023, and was direct. Now with this retrograde that is happening until... November, we can again be questioning our boundaries and our limits. And also on days when Saturn turns to go retrograde, it can really show you if you had a long-term plan and it isn't sustainable, whether that's a long-term relationship or anything that you've been working on long-term, you now all of a sudden are uncertain about it and the ways of the plan that you're working. Retrogrades are good for reworking things, slowing down, being cautious, especially. Now, with having the Saturn retrograde, I've seen sometimes with Saturn going retrograde, a lot of, you know, karmic moments. Saturn is a plan of karmic moments of truth coming to light. And maybe you thought this relationship was stable and now you see the truth in it especially with stability because Saturn rules that so anything you thought was stable maybe you had this business plan and now you're like oh my goodness this is where plans really turn to go a bit rocky and especially with Gemini it's a mutable energy with that new moon it's about how we use our ways around situations where we see okay here's the problem what are my options Gemini is always looking for the options and that's what this new moon will give to you is options but it's not the time to really act upon it okay we also have on the 19th of June the pre-shadow period of Venus retrograde starting Venus will actually go retrograde in the sign of Leon the 22nd of July until September 3rd of September 2023 and it will remain in Leon until October the 8th of October so Given that the pre-shadow period of the Venus retrograde is also starting, which means the plant is slowing down to the point of when it is going to basically, it's already going to be losing its speed and um, till it turns retrograde on the 22nd of July. But during the pre-shadow period of the Venus retrograde, this is where we are reassessing our values, our relationships, and things can get very dramatized emotionally. We do have Mars still in Leo, Venus in Leo, emotionally dramatic where things can get really out there and for the world to see and especially when it comes to our relationships and what we value within life this is a very if i were to sum up this new moon it's a very much a lot to do with less about other people we're not physically we can feel physically unwell square to neptune neptune can make us feel sick be more prone to infections we're just not feeling our best be more lazy we're not in a working space we have all these ideas and thoughts coming through and that can bring up a lot of anxiety if we try to share them with others it's not making sense and not making sense and lacking clarity is a lot that comes through with this new moon and what we need to remember is that this new moon is trying to help us mentally de-stress by actually taking a step back and not overthinking anything 
Overthinking will kill you this new moon. <laughs> it can even depress you. And if you are prone to depression, anxiety, um, anxiousness, or, you know, you generally can also sometimes lack physical vitality. I would really emphasize being very gentle with yourself, boundaries with others. We can absorb other people's energy very easily if you're around someone that is heavily into complaining, being negative, negative energy. This is a great new moon to actually usher in creating boundaries, energetic boundaries around yourself, whether that is through wearing a crystal, you can wear a smoky cord, a black tourmaline, or you can, you know, grounding exercises, walking outside. It's more about definitely disassociating from the external and going into the internal realm of yourself because you can't control your outside circumstances, but you can control your internal responses to things. De-stressing will be the best thing you can do. Yes, new moons do offer new beginnings, but this new moon is coming in with a lot of haziness. Saturn is going retrograde, 17th, 19th is pre-shadow period of the Venus retrograde and the reassessment of relationships, which can turn pretty dramatic and values a lot what we value within life right what is important to me and everyone's values are very different as well as also with the square to neptune square to neptune is going to create a lot of fog and heaviness it will feel heavy best new moon to actually rest um write journal paint creative endeavors things that get you outside of your mind and into your creative energy will be very good for you now, if you are an Aries, this new moon will be happening for you in your third house of communication. It shows a new beginning with communication, connections, having to have a new beginning happening in your day-to-day -day errands, your day-to-day to-do -day to list. This is where you can all of a sudden acquire like a new skill, right? New skills, learning something new, um, and maybe even doing new things within your day. Now, the square to Neptune will be happening in your 12th house. So this is about hidden enemies, but not only just that. So I wouldn't really, during this new moon, especially if you're in Aries, is be too much around people. You could be feeling like, ah, oh, you know, I need some time to myself to gather myself. It's a great new moon for you to actually, you know, open yourself up to new skills and talents, new ideas. Um, writing, getting your, you know, that to-do list done, sending off information might be very difficult. Like if you have to answer a lot of emails and stuff, people will want to communicate to you. It's a very good new moon to find out information because of that Neptune, um, with that square to Neptune can definitely be, be very enlightening where hidden stuff come to light. That's why I say hidden enemies. You might even like realize someone felt a certain way about you that you didn't expect, or you might pick up energy of, you know, because it's also the 12th house, like you're just getting a vibe and you're going to have to really trust your intuition. 12th house is intuition and really trusting your instincts when it comes to those around you. So if you're getting the impression that someone's acting off, trust it. I would not like sign any major deals or set my mind to anything, but I will be open to new um, avenues of learning, upping skills, um, doing new things within my day. It will be very good for you Aries. Now for you Taurus, this is happening, a new beginning, new moon in your second house of finances, skills and talents and income. So you can have new opportunities coming there when it comes to your money and your um, abundance that you have within your life. You have new ideas, this is where you can, might want to send off your resume. I would like have those things prepped though before the time. The square happens to your 11th house of associations. So this can bring in some uncertainty about the groups that you're collaborating, collaborating with or working with. So your work groups, your friend groups, your social groups, family groups, the moment it turns into a group or even uncertainty with an organization. So a company that can be a group. So it's your, your, your income and skills and what you have and what you want to grow. You'll be having these new ideas, but there's uncertainty about Maybe the company you're working for or uncertainty about the direction of the people you're working with or uncertainty too with friends groups because the second house also rules what we value. So you might look at your values in relation to the people around you. I'm feeling uncertain 
about these people. This would not be the best time for you to sign also once again any major deals or contracts with big organizations because you might not fully understand something or fully see it clearly. Now for you Gemini, this um, new moon is happening in your first house of self. So this is a new and fresh beginning when it comes to you. This is rejuvenating your energy. This Gemini season has been not like most Gemini seasons and could have left you feeling pretty drained and uncertain, and, you know, just not sure about your vision when it comes to your goals that you have for yourself and your career and the direction that you want to go. And this new moon offers you a new beginning and a fresh start to yourself. So there's definitely something blooming within you. However, there is a square to Neptune, which is in this 10th house for you. So it's really trusting your intuition when it comes to your goals and career and what you want for yourself and your aspirations. But you might feel uncertain about it, you know, uncertain about the direction moving forward. New beginning within you, a new moon within you is about a fresh start within yourself to reach your goals. But you're uncertain about how are you going to work towards these things? So trust your intuition during this time. Now for you, Cancer, this new moon is about rest and rejuvenation, time out, closing out old chapters, healing, surrendering, letting go of the past. This can bring up a lot of past memories, past experiences. You might be needing a time to self with this new moon. You could be feeling just physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. You can feel very emotional with this new moon. And there is a square to your ninth house of learning wisdom. So it's like you are not really sh sure what the bigger picture is. What is the direction going forward? You could be even uncertain about, you know, what it is you are learning. And, you know, especially if you're a student who is studying, this is higher education, travel. This is about your wisdom and vision, bigger picture within the world. And that's where it is. You really need some time out. This would be a great new moon for you to rest and rejuvenate and really to look at the bigger picture. But there is a lack of clarity with the bigger picture. Know that things will fall into place within time. For you, Leo, a new beginning and a fresh start with your associations, groups, um, social circles, new people could be entering into your groups with this new moon. Um, this is, and it can be any groups, family groups, work groups, um, friend groups. So the people that you associate with, even if you have a hobby, new people are coming in to, for you to connect to. But there is that square to Neptune in your eighth house. And this is about trust, right? You don't know how you can trust people. You might be feeling about, you know, the eighth house has to do with trauma and past experiences, trusting of people, boundaries with others. And this is where your square comes in. So new people are coming into your life, but you're uncertain about the boundaries. You're thinking about past experiences and it can make you feel very uneasy. And it also has to do with your finances too. And finances that are that basically come out paid to you. So investments and so forth, time maybe you've invested, energy you've invested, money you've invested. And you are feeling a bit confused about that. So give it some time, trust your intuition because the eighth house is again us really trusting our intuition when it comes to our assets and finances. And if you are in a partnership with someone, an existing partnership, there can be some confusion around their finances, confusion around your finances too in itself. So be aware of that. I would say with this new moon, you'll be allowing for new connections, but you are very much in a place of uncertain about trust and boundaries within your connections. I would not tell, I would tell you if there's any new like associations via connections that you're getting into, say there's a new company or something you're joining during this time, you'd be very uncertain about how you can trust this company and the finances and payouts that they are saying they're giving to you. You'd be questioning those things around this time. Virgo, 
This is happening in your 10th house, a new and fresh beginning. This is at the top of your chart. This is where you get public recognition for hard work, new ideas, new projects, new work projects, new career projects, new goals you have for yourself. So if there's any goals you've been working on, this is the top of your chart where you'll be thinking, oh, this is the new ideas that are being opened to me, new opportunities coming to you for your career, personal goals, and reputation. The square comes to your partnerships. And this is where... Uh, your one-on-one -on -one connections with others is uncertainty, fogginess. You're not really sure what partnering up, even legal partnering up. So anything that has to do with legal contracts, anything like that, you're uncertain about it. So your career is like, okay, these are new directions I want to go, but I'm really uncertain maybe about the company I'm signed up with. And um, I'm uncertain about the way forward this can also be a family dynamic if you're in a partnership marriage with someone boyfriend i have goals that i want but my relationship is causing me confusion my your relationships will be your biggest confusion and fog under this new moon and lack of like certainty so be aware of that you can be easily manipulated too because it's happening in your house of relationships by others so be aware of that and both professionally and personally so give it some time, allow for the new ideas to come through for you, but give yourself some time to really, you know, gain some clarity without that square to your partnerships. So for you, Libra, ninth house, this is new beginnings and fresh starts to wisdom, philosophy, higher education. Um, this is where you want to teach. This is where you have information to share. This is where you want to learn new information. This is where you are thinking about travel, expansion and growth. Great if you want to learn, higher education, publish something, put something out there. You're really thinking about these things. But the square comes to you in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day routine, right? Your physical, mental, and emotional health and your responsibilities. The sixth house is where we are of service to others. So this is the things that I need to take care of, my responsibilities. You have to take care of your physical health, so you have energy to do your day-to-day -day tasks. But so you want to expand and grow, but you're uncertain of how you're going to work this through into your day-to-day -day routine. You might want to study something, but you're uncertain about how this is going to work in your day-to-day -day routine. You might want to design a course. You want to teach something, but you're uncertain about your day-to-day -day routine and how you are going to make this work. Give it some time, right? That's the best advice I can give to everyone with this new moon is to give it some time. That square is off the energy of the new moon. There are these new beautiful ideas forming, higher education, learning philosophy, but that square means you're uncertain about, you know, the time management behind it. Now for you, Scorpio, this has a new beginning, fresh start in your eighth house of intimacy, bonds, taxes, investments, finances. So there's definitely opportunities for you to invest wisely your time, energy and resources into a project or partnering up with someone or spouses, finances and also emotional bonds with others. You can find yourself feeling very vulnerable and more open during this new moon to want to connect on a deeper level. This is also a new moon. If there's any secrets or information that needs to come to light, it most definitely will for you. Um, however, there is a square Scorpio to your fifth house of fun, pleasure, and romance within your life. So your romantic life could be causing maybe... Um, Maybe you want to invest your time or energy or finances into something, but your romantic life or what gives you pleasure is really where you are feeling a bit off about it. Am I truly feeling this? Do I really want to invest in this project? My romantic life, maybe my romantic relationships, will this take from the final pleasure within my romance? Will I be so invested that I have to cut out certain aspects of fun and pleasure within my life? So give yourself some time as well. For you, Sagittarius, this is a brand new, fresh start, this new moon in your one-on-one -on -one connections with others, both personally and professionally. This is where you can have business deals. This is where you can have deeper commitment within relationships. New relationships can start. Um, existing relationships can move to a higher level. It's a fresh start, a new beginning within your relationships, even your working relationships. Once at seventh house, it's partnering up with others. And this new moon gives you that both personally and professionally with the square to your fourth house. And with the fourth house, it's more like you feel off about your home life or maybe your home life is like creating conflict with your new with your connections. So maybe you and your partner having this fresh start 
or you are entering into this new relationship or your relationship is going to the next level or you are having this new opportunity come through a connection to someone, right, work-wise. However, your home life, your family home life might be making you feel a bit like melancholy. This can also bring like some emotional release from your emotional self because the fourth house is deeply emotional. It's our roots. It's about what makes us feel comfortable. You could feel uncomfortable. So it's like new connections are great, but something about at the time is feeling off and you're feeling like maybe disconnected emotionally. So give yourself some time. Capricorn, this is in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work, routine, physical and mental health. So it's a new fresh start to your routine. So all of a sudden, maybe you were doing a certain thing, maybe you got a new job and now your routine and duties change or within a job, your duties change or within your day-to-day -day life at home. All of a sudden, the routine that you have, you can't keep it for some reason and you need to alter it for whatever reason. You know, maybe you need more rest or sleep or eat healthily. This is also affecting your physical health. So it's really... And also being of service to others, this new moon offers you that opportunity to be more of service to others. But there is a square to your third house so this is like for instance if you're starting a new job all of a sudden you're not very clear about you know what's being communicated to you this is where the contract might be a bit off or the new job all of a sudden you know because it's six houses work routine so maybe you assign certain duties however you are uncertain about what's being communicated and what is required of you to do these tasks. And there is a lot of confusion with communication for you. And you also feel confused mentally. <laughs> mentally, you could be feeling very confused. So give yourself a moment and time. This new moon does offer these new opportunities for work, physical and mental health. And oh, health. I wouldn't go for any checkups or get diagnosis on that day. Or around that time, I would wait for clarity after. It's almost like you can get misdiagnosed or misunderstood. Or maybe they'll think it's one thing, but it's another thing, especially when it's pertaining to your health. So you really need to take care of that. Or if it's a contract that you need to relook really at. There's a lot of confusion around contracts, how you're thinking, information that is given to you pertaining to your physical health or your day-to-day -day tasks or responsibilities, duties, if you're working. And if you're not working, maybe you need to take care of the home or do something within your home, or maybe you're renovating, you know, you're making changes, changes to your life. So, so if you're not working, you're making changes to your life. So you're doing something when it comes to your home and all of a sudden what's being communicated to you isn't understood and you're feeling mentally overwhelmed. Give yourself a break. Now for you, Aquarius, this is a new moon in having fun, pleasure, romance, connection, enjoyment and pleasure within life. But there is a square to what it is of others and values. I wouldn't sign any contracts to around this time. So you might be thinking this will be so pleasurable for me. But then all of a sudden was offered to you what not really what you expect it to be. So there's a really a lot of confusion around values and the people that support you around this time. Now for you Pisces. This is a beautiful new moon and a fresh start to your home life and new beginning to your home, your connections. It gives you this new, new energy coming into your home life. So maybe things are going to be changing around your home, your family, yourself, your family members might be going through changes. You might be going through some changes, Pisces. But the square is coming to your first house. You're uncertain about these changes. You're uncertain about your family changes. You're uncertain about your home changes. You're uncertain about how things are going forward into the future remember this new moon is over the 17 18 so give yourself some time once that square comes off you gain more clarity thereafter it's just that this new moon does give you these new changes and stuff that are coming through for you to your home your family your you know things that make you feel comfortable emotions especially you could also be feeling deeply emotional about past experiences family life at this time but the square comes to yourself and you're uncertain about how things are going to move forward and what what are you know how do you move forward with it? it's more about you and your goals towards your home and family life so that is the energy for all 12 signs for this beautiful new moon and the affirmation for this new moon is put yourself first damn it Okay, put yourself first, damn it. I think this is a good one because like this new moon 
is really about disassociating with the world around us and putting our energy more into ourselves because the world currently can be very confusing. We are picking up energy from other people. We are feeling physically and mentally drained. We are feeling, um, you know, not ourselves. And this would be if people are the type that take advantage of others, this would be the new moon time to do it because people are so not seeing things clearly. We're out of focus. We want a bit of peace and mind especially. So someone can come to you and offer you a great deal during this time, but it's not about that. And this is a new moon that can be very confusing, especially for relationships. So put yourself first, damn it, and take some time out for you and give yourself what you need to move forward. There is a link down below if you'd like to book a new moon reading. Comment down below how you're feeling about this new moon. And I wish you a blessed, beautiful new moon.